Wednesday and Thursday, highs there only in the 60s. Yeah, so many Americans have deep connections to Ukraine. Many are worried about family and friends who remain in the country as the Russian invasion continues. Justina Curranel talked to a teacher who is devastated by what's happening in her country and how her students are keeping hope alive. I do have my family there. So many pretty friends. In between teaching art classes at Pete Lee Elementary, Ukrainian native Arena McAllister tries to learn the latest. Sitting behind the computer screen, she reads daily updates, and she's decorated her desk with colorful sunflowers to give her warmth. Sunflower is an important flower for Ukraine, so it's a symbol of everything positive, right? But after the news of the invasion, it's been hard to see the light, so her students it to her. When McAllister came to school on Monday, she wasn't expecting the amount of support that was coming her way. I looked and I noticed the sunflowers as they started to grow with every minute more and more students come. The idea was planted from one of their own faculty members. So all of our teachers, they, um, they printed out sunflowers so that all the kids can color them. Hundreds of McAllister students expressed their love. We made all these flowers for a reason. We're trying to show her that we love and support her. She lets us do projects and art that inspires us to create more. An act taught by McAllister herself. I never expected to grow a um, garden of love. Sometimes, in the worst of moments, we see the best of people. By the time I was leaving school on Monday, it was a shower of sunflowers. It was a shower of love. I think every single sunflower in my school represents love and support. The sunflower represents Ukraine and also some hope McAllister can hold on to. All your prayers are helping people in Ukraine to be stronger. Now McAllister says she's been the sharing images of support to her loved ones in Ukraine, including those makeshift sunflowers. So just a great gesture there by some of those students. A co-pilot was removed off of a, a JetBlue co-pilot was removed from a flight after TSA workers say they thought he might have been drunk. Thankfully, the worker reported him to police and he was removed from the plane. When he was given a breathalyzer, it clocked in well over what's required by the Federal Aviation Association. One passenger says it was unsettling once she learned the facts. Whatever the procedures are before you fly, they should have caught it before you got on the plane. And it's a sad situation because something could have happened to all of us up in the air. There's babies on this plane. And the co-pilot is identified as 52-year-old James Clifton. Now, Clifton was released to JetBlue security and may face federal charges. The almost year-long search for a missing six-year-old from Tennessee is hitting a new roadblock. Investigators say her parents are no longer cooperating in the search. Six-year-old Summer Wells disappeared last June. On Tuesday, officers and agents working the case announced they were searching the community she was last seen in. But this time, it was a more scaled-back search, and the family won't be joining them. No, they're not cooperating right now. They have attorneys. A lot of it is drained. It's almost like the Smoky Mounds. A lot of it is straight up. It, it, it's very hard for the for the agents and officers to, to go through some of this stuff. He said that this search will be in a more controlled environment. Well, man's best friend has something looking out for him, a very special boy, a young boy. A 12-year-old in Ohio has raised more than half a million dollars to purchase vests for police dogs, and he's just helped another heroic pup. Bradley Blackburn introduces us to the duo. Meet Ranger, a two-year-old canine officer who's protecting the residents of Sacramento, California. And now meet the kid who's helping to protect him. Hi, this is Brady from Brady's Canine Front. Brady Stokowski's mission started when he was just nine years old. Now 12, the sixth grader is still raising funds to buy bulletproof vests for police dogs and spreading the word on social media. I'm selling the ornaments to buy a ballistic vest for police cannons that don't have one. Ballistic vests help shield dogs' vital organs, but each one costs $1,200 or more, an expense that's out of reach for many police departments. 
So Brady's canine fund has raised the money to send vests to 546 working dogs in 37 states. I donate canine fish because I want to protect the canines. Brady says it means just as much to a dog's handler. He just snaps in right here on the side. It's true for Officer Arian Terman, who saw his partner Ranger stabbed in November as they pursued a suspect. He has my back, I have his, um, I do anything for him, and he would do anything for me as he did that night. Now Brady has outfitted Ranger and every other canine officer in Sacramento, some of the hundreds of hardworking police dogs getting help from a remarkable young man. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Now Brady is raising funds for more bulletproof vests and to help you can go to Brady's CanineFun.com. A national investigation is starting into TikTok's impact on the mental and physical health of its users. At least eight states are joining in the probe, including South Carolina's Attorney General Alan Wilson. With more than a billion users, TikTok is a social media giant. But some experts say that the technology that drives the app can promote depression, eating disorders, and drug abuse in children and in teens. Anthony. Well, we continue on through this evening. If you have the outdoor plans, we're in for some more great weather weekend forecast coming up in just a few minutes, Will. Thanks, Anthony. You're looking at 35-year-old Michael McAllister, who is charged with aggravated animal cruelty in McDuffie County. He was arrested on February 24th for shooting one of his neighbor's dogs in the back of the head and burying him in his backyard. He claims that the dog looked like it had been hit by a car, so he was told by a local vet to bring him in. Police reports say he did not do that, and after several days, he came clean to the police. He lied to us for days. We were all looking for Larry, panic-stricken. That wasn't the mercy killing, and we know that because there was nothing wrong with Larry other than the bullet put to his head. The dog was wearing a bright orange collar that had his name, phone number, and address on it when he was killed. Coming up on News 12 at 6, I'm speaking with the family about this heartbreaking loss. Clayton County police say they are thankful a 13-year-old from Kansas is back home safe. They are uh, charging 22-year-old Howard Graham with sex trafficking. Investigators say the two communicated over the gaming app Roblox. They say that Graham drove to Kansas and picked her up on Sunday, February 20th. He's charged with interfering custody, trafficking, and rape. He remains in jail today. Police have identified a potential out-of-state suspect in connection to a bomb threat made at the University of Georgia. Officers say that the bomb threat hoax was posted yesterday on social media. UGA officials say that there are no indications that there was ever any actual threat for the community. After thousands of dollars worth of equipment was stolen from Special Olympics South Carolina, organizers say it's business as usual. Yesterday they held their polar plunge and the thieves couldn't stop people from freezing for a reason. Everyone who jumped the, uh, made, it, made the jump raised at least $50 for the Special Olympics. Uh, those thieves got away last night, but we're going to continue to support our athletes. Yeah. They're jumping into this cold water tonight to raise money for our athletes and it's, we just can't thank them enough. Even a working police pub took the leap into the cold pool. Police are still looking to find the trailer that was stolen over the weekend. Well, do you remember life before the pandemic? Well, some of the stuff you used to do could come back. The White House is rolling out their plan to manage COVID. Their first part involves pharmacies preparing their test to treat strategies. If you're positive, you'll go home with FDA authorized antiviral medicine for free protect against and treat COVID. Second, prepare for any new variants. Third, prevent economic and school shutdowns. Fourth, vaccinate the world and save lives. On top of that, officials are considering letting you fly without a mask. That mandate expires March 18th. The United States Postal Service has delivered over 270 million free COVID test kits to households. The free kits were a part of President Biden's plan. According to the release from the post office, it takes over one day for them to deliver a test kit once it has been received from the manufacturer. Starting next week, you can reorder more test kits from covidtest.gov. 
Well, here at home, Gransky Records is asking you to bring any and all Augusta band flyers and posters from all decades and all genres of music. Henry Owings, the publisher of Chunklet Magazine, will be scanning them all by March 27th. And you can start to bring them in now. He said his goal is to show off Augusta's music scene. You'll still get to keep your posters, but they will be featured in a book there. So pretty cool opportunity. Hospitals around the country and here at home had military members come help them out with COVID cases. We take a look at one group's well-deserved farewell. Anthony? We could be talking about some warm temperatures for this weekend, even record setting as we head closer to Sunday. Have all the details coming up just after the break. And we know how hard this past two years have been for frontline workers, so we applaud our military for stepping in and giving that extra support there. Well, a neglected, epi a neglected epidemic, Capitol Hill is hearing today about missing women of color and how there is not enough coverage of those cases. Does your plugin fade too fast? They are still working to access those emails. It's all part of a big dispute between the lawmakers and Trump and his attorney. Police in New York have arrested a suspect who was attacking Asian people in the city over the past month. Steven Zajonk was arrested last night after he barricaded himself inside the New York Public Library. The 28-year-old has allegedly carried out multiple attacks on Asian women. He went on a crime spree on February 27th. All of the victims are expected to be okay, but Asian women say they will still be paying closer attention. We have to do our best, you know, be hopeful and be vigilant, and, you know, there's not much we can do about it. The man now faces seven counts each of assault as a hate crime, attempted assault as a hate crime, aggravated harassment, and harassment. Police are still looking for more information on the attacks. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill held a hearing today to shine a spotlight on the neglected epidemic of missing women and girls of color in this country. Michael George breaks down the testimony. Advocates testified Thursday about the disproportionate number of women and girls of color who go missing in the U.S. each year. Akia Eggleston is one of them, last seen in 2017 when she was eight months pregnant. There is not a day that goes by without conversation on the subject of our daughter, unborn grandson's ongoing case. We struggle with not knowing what happened to them, where are they, why they can't be found. An arrest was recently made in her case, but her father, Sean Wilkinson, told lawmakers he struggled for years to get attention from both law enforcement and the media. Did not get state, national, or international coverage. Why is this so? The Black and Missing Foundation says people of color make up nearly 40% of the missing population, yet they receive only 7% of national media coverage. We can all name Gabby Petito, Natalie Holloway, Chandra Levy, and many other white women who have gone missing. But can any of you name a person of color that have garnered national media coverage? Advocates say missing persons of color are often the target of domestic violence or sex trafficking, but many people don't view them as victims. There's a mindset that their action or deviant behavior led to their disappearance. They're calling on more federal and state resources to address the problem. Michael George, CBS News. Advocates say the number of missing women and girls of color are most likely underreported and may be even higher. Anthony? Well, as we continue on through the rest of this evening, we're going to be cooling out of the low 80s into the 60s and 40s by tomorrow morning. Now, Friday's going to be a little bit cooler with highs only in the 70s, but the 80s will be making a comeback for this weekend. We'll check out that 70 when we come back.